Heartiest greetings of joy in Jesus Christ. Heartiest greetings of joy in Jesus Christ. Welcome as we celebrate together the season of Advent at Desert Skies United Methodist Church. We're a joyful community drawing people to Christ as a multi-site ministry. One church, two campuses, and now online. I'm Reverend Candace. And I'm Reverend Susan. We come to the Advent season in anticipation. It's a season of waiting or of celebrating what is to come. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time this morning, I'd like to draw your attention to the bar at the top of your screen. There you will find a connection card as well as links to our website and Facebook pages where you can learn a whole lot more about our church. If you are new here and you'd like to receive our weekly e-blast email, you can share your contact information with us on the connection card or even in the chat feature to the right of your screen. And now, let us center our hearts for worship.
In both the Gospel of Matthew and in Isaiah, a messenger appears as a sign from God, heralding a new era. In each passage, the words, do not be afraid, appear, offering a clue that the messenger, whether it was a prophet or the angel, was referencing something that induced fear in the recipient. A new way of being together, of relating, of loving, often takes courage, eschewing the present order of things so that a new and better day can be born. you now to turn to whoever is in the room with you, or if you are all by yourself just watching this on TV, I want you to imagine the person you would love to run up and give a hug to right now and just say, the peace of Christ be with you.
Well, once again, boys and girls, we are ready for our children's time during Advent, where we are learning, um, relearning the song, This Little Light of Mine, using sign language, which is a language that over a million people around the world use as their primary means of communication. So um, I'm going to play and sing. Reverend Susan is going to sign, but we've got Hide It Under a Bushel. No. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, so... We're going to have to remember that first verse, though, right? So we'll do this little light of mine first, and then we'll do that one. All righty, so here we go. Whoa. Everybody get your candles ready. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let's do the chorus again. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, boy, it's just so good um, to be signing, singing, singing by signing. I feel more love in the world already, even as we go with the love section of our Advent time. You see, when we add more music and more light into the world... We increase the love all around the world. When we, want, when we want people to know how much we love them and care about them and want them to feel accepted, that the light that God gives them in this world actually matters. So thank you for showing us how to sign and sing the love of God. Won't you pray with me as you repeat each line following me? Thank you, God, for giving us light and for giving us music. Help our hands dance and our hearts sing to spread more love in the world. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 7 verses 1 through 14. In the days of Ahaz, Jotham's son and grandson of Judah's king, Uzziah, Aram's king, Rezan, and Israel's king, Pekah, Remaliah's son, came up to attack Jerusalem, but they couldn't overpower it. When the house of David was told that Aram had become allies with Ephraim, their hearts and the hearts of their people shook as the trees of a forest shake when there is a wind. But the Lord said to Isaiah, go out to meet Ahaz, you and your son, Shear Jashub, at the end of the channel of the upper pool, by the road to the field where laundry is washed, and say to him, be careful, and stay calm. Don't fear and don't lose heart over these two pieces of smoking torches, over the burning anger of reason, Aram, and Remaliah's son. Aram has planned evil against you with Ephraim and Remaliah's son, saying, let's march up against Judah, tear it apart, capture it for ourselves, and install Tabeel's son as its king. 
But the Lord God says, it won't happen. It won't take place. The chief of Aram is Damascus. The chief of Damascus is reason. In 65 more years, Ephraim will be shattered as a nation. The chief of Ephraim is Samaria, and the chief of Samaria is the son of Remaliah. If you don't believe this, you can't be trusted. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask a sign from the Lord your God. Make it as deep as the grave or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I won't ask. I won't test the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, house of David, isn't it enough for you to be tiresome for people that you are also tiresome before my God? Therefore, the Lord will give you a sign. The young woman is pregnant and is about to give birth to a son, and she will name him Emmanuel. As we said last week, our worship series this Advent calls on the power of music that has always called humanity to a brighter tomorrow. Rather than turn away from music in sorrow, we will turn toward music, the story of music, and deepen our appreciation of its role in healing, change, and reconciliation. Indeed, on this Sunday, with love at the center, we can attest that probably love songs top the charts in the history of human song. This week, some of our small groups will be hosting discussions of the documentary film, Girls on the Wall. The girls of this documentary are juvenile offenders in prison. A drama teacher leads them in the writing uh, of the story of their lives and creating a musical out of it. As they allow the process and the music to penetrate their hardened hearts, they find that their desire for love is the key to moving forward in their own healing and rehabilitation. Information about this film and small group discussions can be found in our e-blast. In this moment, we present you with an anthem called Love Has Broken Down the Walls. This anthem has become a favorite of youth choirs across the country. Youth, young people are showing us what it means to accept each other's diversity as a global community, and we pray that this continues as time moves on. Thank you. 
Hear this reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 1. Verses 1 through 15 are a record of the ancestors of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham, including all the generations before and after David the king. A reading begins with verse 16 and continues through verse 25. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who was called the Christ. So there were 14 generations from Abraham to David, 14 generations from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 generations from the exile to Babylon to the Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as an angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus. Pastor Terry had planned what she anticipated would be an excellent children's message for Advent. Using today's text, she intended to illustrate for the children and the congregation the vital importance of paying attention to the signs of the coming of the Christ child that God gives us. Her key verse was Isaiah 7, 14a, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. She had painstakingly constructed a stop sign using red construction paper, a white marker, and wooden dowel. When the children gathered around her on the front of the chancel steps, Pastor Terry held up the sign and asked, What's this? And even the youngest of the children obligingly exclaimed, A stop sign! And Pastor Terry thought to herself, Oh, yes, it's going according to my plan. And she continued, In your school, the teacher always tells you what comes next after stop, right? Well, Pastor Terry's carefully planned message was based on the expectation, which is always a dangerous thing, that the children's response would be, Stop, look, and listen. Unfortunately, the children must have been attending a different school because as one, they loudly proclaimed, stop, drop, cover, and roll. Let us pray, said Pastor Terry, still a bit startled by this abrupt change to her well-planned and well-crafted message. The point here is that we don't always get what we expect or even want for our children, our lives, our families, even for our churches. We are not in control. God is. You see, life is not about what we want and desire. Rather, it's about what God wants and promises. Perhaps you have heard this statement before. If you want to make God laugh, tell God your future plans. This Sunday, when love is the Advent focus, our two scripture passages bring talk of signs of God's presence, of God's love, but also of God's challenge to us 
to get love right. Some of us might be a little theologically skeptical about saying it was a sign from God, but signs were deeply important to ancient peoples. Think of them as symbols, tangible things pointing beyond themselves to some greater concept. And the sign that comes up in the complex Isaiah passage so beautifully read by Gail this morning was fraught with the politics of the day and plenty of fear of annihilation. And so we read, they shook as the trees of the forest shake. But the symbol God gives them is a child. Children were often signs in the Hebrew texts. And certainly, as we look at this symbol, we see the child as the future generation. And this future is Emmanuel, God with us. Now, last week, we explored the action-packed and very brief Gospel of Mark. This week, we turn to the Gospel of Matthew, written for a Hebrew Bible literate crowd. And so Matthew is careful to construct, to connect Jesus strongly to Jewish heritage and history. Here then we see the past struggles connected to the present, connected to the future. This child is a product of a historical lineup of generations and will be the sign that God is with us well into future trials as well. We hear of Joseph's radical act of love in a situation that gave him every reason to walk away. The messenger says, don't be afraid, Joseph, to do the hard thing here. There's a big payoff for humanity if you do what I say. Now, in our Isaiah text, King Ahaz did not want to ask God for help with his plans. You see, God invites Ahaz to ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But we read that Isaiah couldn't be bothered. He replied, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. So I ask you, if God invited you to ask for any sign of God's presence and guidance, even for a major miracle, wouldn't your response tend to be to stop everything, drop to your knees, cover your face in humility, and roll with pleasure in God's glory? I mean, amen. Bring it on, Lord. Show me a sign. Sadly, that wasn't so for poor Ahaz. Let's look for a moment at his situation. Ahaz had been crowned king of Judah at the young age of 20 during the 8th century, the late 8th century before the birth of Christ. Surrounding nations were threatening to conquer a Judah that was weakened by political infighting, religious turmoil, and social injustice. <laughs> Sound familiar to anyone? There was a huge and powerful Assyria that loomed on the horizon as a clear and present danger to the entire region. Wars and rumors of wars were a daily part of life. And in the verse before today's lesson begins, the Lord warned Ahaz, if you do not stand firm in faith, you shall not stand at all. Well, Isaiah stood firm, but on the quicksand of his own plans and his effort to keep power and control. He stood firm in his faith, all right, his faith in himself and his own need to be the one in charge. In fact, he even allowed himself to be persuaded to seek aid from mighty Assyria. And he did that by recognizing Assyrian supremacy over Judah and by paying an enormous protection tribute to Assyria. As a result, Judah became a vassal state and Ahaz a puppet of the Assyrian king. So it's no wonder that Isaiah 
comes to Ahaz and urges him to please listen to the Lord. And no wonder God continued to urge Ahaz to ask for a sign of God's presence and guidance. There are a lot of people in the world like Ahaz, people who simply refuse to accept the obvious help that they desperately need. Perhaps you know a few. This refusal of Ahaz to even ask God for a sign frustrates the prophet Isaiah who responds, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to for you to weary it is too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also. Well, in spite of Ahaz's stubborn refusal, God persists and provides a sign that we are all ready to affirm and to celebrate this Advent season. So we look again at verse 14 in our text. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Well, now that's a sign that's based in reality that can't be ignored. That's an offer from God that can't be refused. And Matthew connects that promise of Emmanuel in the time of Ahaz to the birth of Christ and claims that God is with us now. And that is God's Advent promise. Christ has come, Christ is coming, and Christ will come again. Now granted, it's often bewildering and confusing for us to recognize God's presence as Emmanuel. And that's certainly true as we continue to hear news from all around the world. I mean, in any one newscast, we hear of pandemic tragedies, terrorist attacks, assassinations, economic disasters, hurricanes and tornadoes, raging wildfires, violence in the streets and in homes. And then, of course, we add to that layer our own family and personal stress levels, which are often elevated into the red zone the more we enter the holiday season, I'd say especially in 2020. For God's people during the reign of Ahaz and for us today, this is a time of uncertainty, of confusion, anger, maybe even fear. During this time of Advent, the signs of the season can help us overcome those fears by bringing us closer to one another and closer to God. Advent, you see, is a specific season that draws us closer to the baby, the promised Emmanuel, about to be born in a troubled and strife-torn world. Anxious families and fearful hearts are indeed part of our own daily experience. And our tasks as followers of this Christ child is to care for the future by loving it like a child. We must love the child, nurture the child, or as we use it in symbolic meaning, love the future, nurture the future. And that is done by being courageous enough to love differently, love fully, love in a way that nurtures all of humanity's future, not destroys it. As we heard in the introduction today's, to today's choir anthem, this week's documentary is such a powerful story of young people. Talk about a sign. This story wakes us up to the thousands of young lives in danger of getting lost in the penal system. And we discover that there is remarkable power in telling your story. In the film, its director, Ross, interviews some really hard case inmates who happen to be girls. And they talk openly about the robberies and murders they've committed. They tell stories of abuse and addiction, but mostly they heal. 
And that is perhaps the most remarkable part of the film. You become a witness to inner change. And that change is initiated by storytelling and by music. And Ross, like many good directors, becomes a catalyst for change by simply holding listening space for the speaker. Now, there's a lot that goes into documentary filmmaking. Stamina, courage, and heroic, undaunted strength in the face of challenge. But the biggest production skill might simply be listening. You ask the questions, but you've got to hear what the people are saying. So I encourage all of you to watch and discuss the documentary. And I do have a slight warning here. There is some pretty deep language and some horrific stories. But you will witness that powerful effect that telling your story can have, especially as you begin to realize that so much of your life is simply out of your hands, beyond your control, Yet your belief in God with us, Emmanuel, gives you hope for a beautiful future. World events and personal crises are daily reminders that we aren't in control. I mean, just think of one thing that's happened to you in 2020 that you wouldn't have begun to guess would happen just a year ago. Our best laid plans and expectations may never come to pass, just like those of Pastor Terry in our opening story. However, God's plan, God's Emmanuel plan, is sure and certain. God surprised Pastor Terry through the children and some faithful ways for Emmanuel living that we can use as well. So first, stop all the busyness and preoccupation with your own plans. Just stop it, even if it's just for five minutes. Second, drop to your knees at the foot of Emmanuel's manger. Remember, God is with us as we taste God's sign of promise in the bread and cup of Holy Communion as you pass by the font of God's splash of belonging to God's people whenever we celebrate the sacrament of baptism. Three, cover your very souls with the security blanket of God's forever loving presence. And finally, roll with joy and thanksgiving that God is in control in the world and in your life. Roll with all the contagious enthusiasm that God gives you. Sing the song of Emmanuel. Christ has come. Christ is coming and Christ will come again. Now that's a plan and a promise for sure. Amen. gentle pull of God is often lost amidst the rush of all the obligations which lay a claim on us yet just beyond the frantic pace our restless feet have trod lie deep still of quietness the dwelling place of God meet me in the stillness Lord be the me 
We gather to offer thanks to God for all God has given us by sharing generously of ourselves and of our resources. Through our gifts, we hope to meet God in the stillness and in those places where we serve and where we receive. We ask that you prepare your offering check and put it in an envelope and mail it to the church at 3255 North Houghton Road, Tucson, Arizona, 85749. Or go online to www.desertskiesumc.org and click on the donate button. As we prepare to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion this morning, we recognize that though we are all in our different places around the city and even around the nation, we are united by the one spirit. And so I invite you to prepare whatever you may have there at your home. It could be a cracker, a piece of bread, your breakfast, and something to drink. Also, if you would like to have communion uh, through a drive-through on the each campus. We will be serving that to you safely in your cars. Our God, Song of the Ages, be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to raise our voices with you, tuning ourselves to you, creator of heaven and earth. You filled the night of creation with music and light, setting in motion the rhythms of sunrise and sunset, of sound and silence. You formed within us your love song and breathed into us the breath of life. Sometimes our voices are choked off and we cannot find your melody, but you keep the bass line humming, waiting for us to rejoin the chorus. You show up in the worst of times, offering us the way to freedom in you. Your voice breaks through in prophets whose songs wake us up to the kingdom you desire. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power, power and, and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, breaking forth into light from the blessed darkness of a womb. He brought light that illumined a path so we could see our way to a more beloved community. Your spirit anointed him to raise his voice, to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners, and invited us to do this, this too. Born into a world of suffering, he suffered. Born into a world of senseless death, he died. Born into a world that needed hope, he rose, delivering us and proclaiming light and life, the triumphal coda of life's song. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit, holy luminary lighting our way. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of my new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so... In remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us your love and light so that our hearts may be broken open for the world and our lives poured out in service. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Mix our voices in harmony with each other until we sit at the same table and sing in the same choir in your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of, children of, of the children of God, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as the song we sing is song for all. And now let the weak say I am strong, let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Our Carol of Resistance was written in 1849 by a Massachusetts Unitarian minister, Rev. Edmund Hamilton Sears. One verse has been left out of several hymnals over the decades since then, but the new hymnal, Glory to God, restores this powerful verse that refers to the love song of the angels being drowned out by our warring nature. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long, Beneath the angel's strain have rolled two thousand years of wrong. And we at war on earth hear not the love song which they bring, or hush the noise, and cease the strife, and hear the angels sing. Let us be reminded that we are to listen to the angel chorus, and then join it, raising our voices with a message that love, not hate, is the answer. for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that God is with us, Emmanuel, and continue to fill the night left by sadness with messages of love, go into your lives humming the tunes that keep love alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid. Do, Do not, not be, be afraid. afraid. Amen. Amen.